Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, your kind introduction. As we know, forensic radiology is a non-invasive procedure that preserves the physical integrity of the body. Our purpose was to demonstrate the role of CT and MRI examinations on the post-mortem analysis of a corpse. Our inclusion criteria is, or were, that a person had to die in a violent way by suicide or homicide within the hospital area of our investigation. So an abandoned car was discovered on the edge of a cliff about 50 meters above the beach, and the cadaver was on the beach in the prone position. The cadaver was then sent to the forensic medicine department at the nearest hospital for the external examination, post-mortem imaging by a radiographer, and the internal dissection. For data collection purpose, the pathologist gave permission to be recorded during the course of conventional autopsy, and the radiology department agreed to perform the post-mortem imaging, and the imaging was carried out with a 16 slices CT equipment and a 1.5 Tesla MRI. Imaging examinations were performed to the same anatomical regions as in the conventional autopsy. In the, external, in the external examination, we can see multiple abrasions and bruises and the laceration of the scalp with large exposure of the bone. In the imaging, there were presence of liquids in the sinuses and fractures of the ribs, both humerus and left scapula consistent with a violent trauma. In the thorax, we see the liquid filling of the trachea and the proximal portions of the main bronchi. In the lung, there were a diffuse parenchymal densification with lung septal thickening and interlobular ground glass density overlapping and bilateral pleural effusion, of course. In the internal dissection, it was in the presence of sand throughout the lumen of the larynx, pharynx, trachea, and esophagus. There was seen fractures of the anterior arcs from second to seven on the right ribs and of all the anterior arcs of the left ribs. And in the right and left pleural cavities contained about 200 cubic centimeters of serous fluid each one. So, in this study, the image examinations were sufficient to determine the cause of death during. Both techniques viewed fluid in thoracic cavity, but imaging did not detect the presence of the sand, but detected unspecific foreign bodies. In conclusion, literature reviews have shown good correlation between both techniques and this case study has shown that there are certainly a good congruence between the two modalities. The virtual autopsy preserves the forensic evidence and it represents an alternative to religious communities with, which do not accept the conventional autopsy. And ethically, the virtual autopsy is among the methods that support respect for human beings, the right to privacy, even even after death. Virtual autopsy also creates another intervention field for radiographers and must integrate the expertise of forensic pathologists, radiologists, and radiographers. The challenge is to unite these three professionals by intense communications, by a basic understanding of forensic pathology, by by the radiologists and by the knowledge of post-mortem imaging procedures by radiographers in combination with establishment of educational and reporting guidelines. Here, there are, here is the reference, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>